Welcome to theme 2.5, where we will be discussing transformations and how we get integrating factors and why we do transformations. So previously, we have transformed integrals from Cartesian coordinates to polar coordinates. Triple integrals we have transformed from Cartesian coordinates to the spherical coordinates and to cylindrical coordinates. So if we say determine a certain integral using polar coordinates, and we know that x is equal to r cos theta and y is equal to r sin theta because we know our very important equations, and we have our integrating factor being r, how did we get to r? So how we got to r and any other integrating factor is by using the Jacobian. So basically what you do is you have a matrix of partial derivatives. So just to simply explain with this example how to use the Jacobian is, so we know that x is equal to r cos theta. So first we partially derive x towards r, which will give us cos theta. Then we partially derive x towards theta, which will give us minus r sine theta. Then at the bottom row, we say y partially derived to r, which will give us sine theta, and then y partially derived towards theta, which gives us r cos theta. Then we cross multiply these quantities, which will give us r cos squared theta minus minus r sine squared theta, which gives us r cos squared theta plus r sine squared theta. And that would give us the following, which leads us to r. So that's just an easy example of how we get to the integrating factor of r for polar coordinate transformation. So changing the variables in the double integrals would look like this. So it's just the absolute value of the partial derivatives of your x and y over partial derivatives of some values. This isn't specifically r or theta. This can be any variables that you want. For triple integral transformation, you would have the following. So now you have three variables, which is x, y, and z. So all of the three will need other three variables to transform to. So you will have all of the partial derivatives of x at the top, and then y, and then z, remembering that this has to be, this has to match up. So the partial derivative of a variable has to be in the same column, and the partial derivative of x has to be in the same row. So for an example, r is the region bounded by the lines y is equal to x plus y, y minus x is equal to negative 2, y plus x is equal to 1, and y plus x is equal to negative 1. Evaluate the integral. So before we knew about transformation, we would have just drawn what the region looks like on the x y plane. So on the x y plane it looks something like the following. And as we can see it's not a very nice picture to look at because if we even if we use type 1 or type 2 we will end up with several integrals that we have to integrate between different regions. For example, if we use type 1 then we'd have y going from this function to this function up to here and then it would go from this function to that function up to here and then from this function to that one. So you'd have three regions, which is quite a lot. But the magic of transformation makes things easier. So what if we say y minus x is v and y plus x is equal to u? So then we'll have y is equal to v plus x 
and with manipulation we can get that x is equal to u minus v over 2. So then we have y in terms of two different variables. So to get the, what it would look like on the v u axis, we have to use the boundaries that were given to us in terms of x and y. So if you want to transform, you have to make life easy for yourself. You have to choose things that you already have. So the reason why we chose y plus x is equal to u and y minus x is equal to v is because our boundaries gave that to us. Because here we have y plus x and y plus x and y minus x and you'll have y minus x here. So if you look at your boundaries, you can see what will make it easier for you to get the boundaries of the VU plane. You'll see what I mean now. So using the information we have, we then substitute V with Y minus X and U with Y plus X, and we will get V is equal to 1, U is equal to 1, V is equal to minus 2, and U is equal to minus 1. So on the VU plane, this is what it will look like. Doesn't that look so much better? So before we can integrate, we need an integrating factor because we have our boundaries, but we need our integrating factor to be able to get the area. So we have to derive x in terms of u and v and y, we have to partially derive towards u and v. So x partially derived towards u is a half. x partially derived towards v is minus a half. y partially derived to u is a half. And y partially derived to v is also a half. So then we do that thing where we cross multiply and that gives us a half. So our integrating factor would be a half. Using the vu plane, we now get the following integral. So we know that our v is in between negative 2 and 1 and our u is in between minus 1 and 1. So the function they gave us in the beginning was 4x. So remember since we transformed to a u and a v, this x can't stay. So we know that x is equal to u minus v over 2. So we take the x and we put a u minus v over 2 in its place. And we do not forget the integrating factor that we have just calculated. After this, you can normally integrate to u and v. And then you will end up with an answer of 3. So this just makes our lives easier when your integral region looks a bit difficult. Example 2. R is the region inside the circle x minus 2 squared plus y plus 3 squared is equal to 1. Write this integral as an integral in polar coordinates. So we've already done that. But you have to understand that polar coordinates is also a type of transformation. So in, on the x and y plane, your circle would look like this, which is very difficult to integrate in polar coordinates when you have it as x and y. So what you can do is you can take x minus 2 and y plus 3 and make it a very nice centered circle by saying u is equal to x minus 2 and v is equal to 1 plus 3. So then on the vu plane, we have a nice circle with a radius of 1. But you have to realize that if we want to write now u squared plus v squared is equal to 1 in terms of polar coordinates, that u is equal to r cos theta and v is equal to r sine theta. But before we do that, 
in polar coordinates, we have to get our Jacobian for the transformation to u and v. And we know that x, x is equal to u plus 2 and y is equal to v minus 3. So x partially derived towards u is 1 and partially derived to v is 0. And then y partially derived to u is 0 and y partially derived to v is 1. So the Jacobian for the transformation to u and v is 1. So now if we want to transform u and v to polar coordinates, we have to do the same thing. So first we get the boundaries. So we know that r goes from 0 to 1 and theta goes from 0 to 2 pi. And now we have to get the Jacobian, but we know the Jacobian for polar coordinate transformations is r. So we can get our integral, which is 4u plus 2 plus v minus 3. So this is before we transformed it to polar coordinates, and we have our integrating factor of 1. So now we transform u and v to r and theta, which then gives us the following, which is 4r cos theta plus r sine theta plus 5. Remembering this r integrating fraction, if they ask you to determine or show how you get the integrating factor, you have to be able to show it to them by using the Jacobian. And then you know that theta goes from 0 to 2 pi and r goes from 0 to 1. And yes, that's how you do transformations. Just a quick note. If you have an ellipse, so the general form for an ellipse is x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared is equal to 1. Then if you want to transform it to an easier form, then you can say x is equal to au and y is equal to bv. And that will result in a circle in the uv plane. And then we can use polar coordinates as we've used before.